These card readings are for your entertainment and are laced with my personal opinions and perspectives. I'm not qualified to offer medical or legal advice. Seek professionals for legal, mental, or physical health needs, and know that while cards can give you major insights, ultimately, your moves are yours to make. Welcome to the Get Red Podcast, the show where you ask a question of the cards and you get red. I am your reader. I'm Amanda, although I've been going by Andy lately and loving that. So if you want to like pepper that in, try it out. I'm into it. Um, oh baby, we are at a Gemini full moon. Exactly conjunct Mars at 16 degrees opposite that sun in Sag at 16. And um, it's tense. It's a really intense moon. Mars has been retrograde since the end of October and will continue to be retrograde until like January 12th. And so this is sort of a culmination point. You know, full moons are generally peak culminating moments where things can, they grow to such a size they cannot get bigger and must be released, let go. Okay, this is not a time to call things into your experience. This is a time to release things out of your experience and especially a full moon conjunct Mars. It's a great time to get out the sharp scissors and make some cuts. Um, you know, Mars is, it is a cutting energy. It is penetrating. It wants to take action and sometimes aggressive action. It is um, motivated, it is driven, it can be harsh, um, and it can be really intense. You know, it has like a lot of activation behind it and not always positive, you know? Like if you don't know how to channel that kind of energy, it can very easily um, become explosive. And I've been thinking a lot about this Mars retrograde as like, you know, if Mars is fire energy, and fire goes in reverse, then it becomes a slow burn. Or you could think of it as like a gradual warm up. You know, like, okay, let's say you, Mars is activating you to want to work out. Well, if you go from zero to 60, you know, from like um, sitting for work all day to suddenly doing high intensity, whatever they call that, high intensity interval training or something like that, the possibility for injury is really strong. Another Mars significant significator. Whereas if you give your body, your musculature, a gradual warm up, you build and you introduce a little bit of fire and then a little bit more fire and then a little bit more and then a little bit more. Once you get to that moment when your muscles are fully ready to take on something more intense or something more active, then you've had this gradual warm up to prepare you for that moment. So I guess my question is here at the Gemini full moon conjunct Mars, the peak point of the Mars retrograde. Since it turned retrograde in the, at the end of October and you've had this gradual warm up or this slow burn, are, it, are your muscles prepared for the sprint, the urgency to take action that you may be feeling? The intent, you may be feeling it quite intensely at this full moon, but ask yourself if you are properly warmed up, you know, like if your muscles are warm enough to handle that kind of aggressive, fast, direct, strong action. And if they are, Okay, and if not, Mars is gonna be retrograde for another two weeks. Maybe this is the moment when you realize you still have a couple more weeks and even more than that until January 12th, from now until January 12th, to continue to build that heat. 
so that when Mars goes direct, you are much clearer on the actions that you're going to take and your musculature, your body is heated enough, warmed up enough and ready to do it. So anyway, that's my thoughts. Take it for what, take you it for what you will here at this Gemini full moon. And, um, you know, for the love of God, be easy on yourselves, especially Gemini rules the mind, you know, and our thoughts and, um, uh, Mars and Gemini can be really scattered and trying to do everything all at once, all the time. And yeah, scale back, cool off, soften the edges of your mind and your perspective and the way you talk to yourself and others, especially now at this moon. All right, um, we have some callers. Shall we pull some cards? First question. I am a Taurus, Sun, Sagittarius, Moon, conjunct Pluto, and a Cancer rising. Um, as for my question, I feel like I'm getting clearer and clearer on what I want my future to look like. And the clearer I get, the more education I realize I need, the more I realize I need to learn, the more I realize I need to do. And so my question is, what is the best next step for me to take? Where would it be best to put my energy at this moment in time for me? to move towards a future that is um, aligned with my authentic truth and with my uh, joy of my inner child. Okay, cool. Thanks for, for asking. I've got the Poesis Oracle with me here today by Andrea Wan. Um, let's ask. What's the next steps in pursuing a future that is authentic to your joy? Let's find out. Let's see what the cards have to say. Whoa. Okay. Well, this is talking about the this full moon conjunct Mars and maybe... Um, looking at your Saturn a little bit here because we have rage and there's the volcano erupting and then we have struggle which looks like someone trying to push this head up a hill which actually interestingly that head makes me think of Gemini and the volcano erupting makes me think of Mars so it's like okay there's Mars in Gemini here in these cards rage and struggle, struggles with anger, struggles with that Mars energy and how to channel it. And especially how all of that, um, if we look at these cards in a sequence, those of you watching the video cast, you'll see, it looks like this person is pushing a big boulder, which is carved into the shape of a head up the side of the volcano, which then erupts at the top. Um, or maybe the volcano erupts before they can even push it all the way up the hill. So there's some... Um, there's Mars struggles. There's Mars struggles, um, perhaps like a, a mentality of struggle. Like in, in what way has a struggle mindset deep-seated some rage, some anger? inside of you that maybe is ready to release at this full moon. You know, I think of this Gemini moon as an opportunity to release things that we have been holding that have been sharp and, and making us edgy. It's like, um, I'm, I imagine these like knives turned inwards and creating a pain inside of us that makes us sort of painful externally as well, like prickly and edgy. Um, and this like rage that's seated in a struggle mentality just feels like um, capitalism and like the, the ways that it creates like hustle culture, the struggle that it, it offers most people in their experience of trying to succeed in capitalism. And you're asking me about future, which, um, and you're talking about education and all of that just sounds career oriented to me. 
So let's just keep pulling and see what else we can get. Oh, something fell out. Yeah, exactly. As if to confirm, we have the work card and we see someone working at their desk. Um, I like that we're seeing an x-ray vision of this person. We're looking at their skeleton. Something about really important about transparency in your work, about um, seeing through the surface, about getting into maybe even again, like Saturn could be here as well in this reading since we are seeing the skeletal system and the bone structure. But I also really love that there's like a flower above the pelvis, like where this person's organs and soft belly would be, which really speaks to me of what you mentioned about the authentic joy and you framed it as like your inner child. I'm, I'm just wondering if part of your authentic joy has to do with, um, Oh, this person's working on a loom. Whoa. If you look from far away, it looks like they're working on a laptop. If you look up close, their feet are on the pedals and they're, they are weaving. They are weaving on a loom. So um, if uh, maybe, is there something that appears to be work at first, but it is actually your art? And does your art or like the thing you are driven to do for work or the thing you are driven by passionately, creatively, does it have to do with like, um, I'm getting like a scorpionic, almost like x-ray vision of just like, okay, I see what you're saying on the surface, but I want to get to what's underneath of it. I'm riffing here. Let's keep going. There's also something really interesting with like the person sitting down to work, weaving at the loom. Um, I guess if you're asking about like next steps and advice, the first thing that's coming up is dealing with the struggle mentality and the anger that it can create. And like maybe just letting some of that built up um, rage, that like built up capitalism rage that I feel like most of us need therapy for. Um, like letting it out, just letting it come out, having like a catharsis moment with the volcano erupting, like maybe, you know, in a way, in a space that feels safe for you to do that. And then it's like, okay, now get to work. And by getting to work, I mean, practice your craft, you know, because then once that release has happened, it's like, now what do I do? <sighs> well, I'm an artist, so I'm going to make art. Or I'm an astrologer, so I'm gonna study the stars. Or I'm um, a programmer, so I'm gonna code. You know, or whatever that is. It's It feels like Eight of Pentacles energy to me, if you know that energy in the tarot. It is one of um, just rolling up your sleeves and checking off your to-do list. All right, let's learn how to do this. Learning by doing, learning through practice, apprenticeship. Keep going. Wow, did you see that? Okay, wow. Ah, oh, this card, compassion. And we're seeing a compass with two hearts, actually hearts everywhere, at every directional point, north, south, east, west, everything in between is marked by a heart. Um, which is validating and confirming your instinct to honor your joy in whatever direction you decide to move towards next. Oh, you're a Sagittarius moon conjunct Pluto in the sixth. Holy crap. This is that work card. And like why we are seeing someone completely transparently, like we're looking right through them and seeing their very like sinews and insides and bone structure that feels really Plutonian to me for some reason in the sixth house of like work and labor. And you have your moon there, you know, conjunct Pluto. So there's the depth. There's the depth in like 
there's such a depth to your sense of purpose when it comes to your work and like how you apply yourself at work. That's part of maybe what is feeding you here. And maybe because you know struggle, you know, like you have pushed the boulder brain, the heavy mind up the mountain you get it, you know, with Pluto conjunct the moon, you get it in a fire sign in Sagittarius. And so there's something maybe about like you understanding like your experiences, um, everything you've experienced with that like struggle and rage energy seems to be sort of channeling towards a culmination point that can be seen in how you apply yourself on the daily, on a daily basis to your daily life and tasks and like what you are doing with your hands, <laughs> the work you are doing out in the world. And then of course, keeping, while you are exploring or choosing a directional focus, keeping your heart in mind There's like something else that wants to happen here. Mars retrograde in your 12th. <sighs> Mars retrograde in your 12th. It's, it's, um, it's hidden. I, you know, it's like, it's that, that's such a hidden solo private space. And I just wonder what will happen for you. What revelations may ha may come to you here at this full moon. Um, And then when Mars goes direct on January 12th, I wonder if you'll have the clarity This feels like the full moon energy, the struggle and the rage, the culmination point of the Mars retrograde. And then maybe you'll get the the clarity you need to channel that into something tangible and active that you can do um every day, like a practice. Okay, I feel like there's one more card. Choosing a direction, like if compassion is your compass, then you, then it's it's self-compassion, compassion for others as well, which could indicate some sort of service orientation or oriented oriented work, but not necessarily. I see this card more as like self-compassion. You know, like choosing a direction, choosing to navigate by compassion choosing to navigate by your heart. I feel like there's just one more card that wants to... <laughs> yeah, just reiterating. Okay, it's it says guide. And of course we have this person at a crossroads. There's a road sign with like multiple directions. And then we've got this big these two legs morphing into a big giant hand that points this way, points in a particular direction. So there is this like, there's a catharsis I think that needs to happen over the struggles that you've been experiencing, the struggles that you have ex experienced. I don't know if that's past, present or all of, or all, all of it. Um, once that catharsis has happened, that um, rage volcano, then the directional focus has become clear. You know, I think like Mars, it just really feels to me like Mars retrograde has to um, make its way all the way up the culmination point to the catharsis, the explosion, and then all the way back down and turn direct and slowly pick, pick up motion again. And then that like, Let's put it like this. You're able to navigate from compassion much more easily and like guide yourself with a with that compassion compass when your rage is not bottled up and stuck in a struggle exertion experience. 
inside of you. And that's that like blades turned inward Mars and Gemini energy that I was talking about earlier. I just really feel like when Mars retrograde like eases up a little bit, there's some clarity of indirection that comes out of that. And the motivation, the positive aspect of Mars kicking in gear to help you just roll up your sleeves and, and start trying it out. You know, you can always change directions. I mean, like, is this not the most Sagittarian energy ever? We have a compass. We have road signs with a whole lot of them pointing lots of different ways. You know, it's sort of a scarecrow moment of like this way or maybe this way. And I would say um, once Mars comes out of retrograde and you have learned and understood what you, what it is showing you, teaching you in this time period and you feel clear and grounded, um, just choose a direction. If it feels like a compassionate direction for you, if it feels like something your heart genuinely wants and just start working with it, start moving in that direction, start getting your hands around it and see how it feels. There's at some point you have to just see how it feels to, by actually doing it before you can make any more choices. You can always change your mind. You really can. Otherwise, if you, if you can't, if you feel you can't change your mind, there's way too much pressure here. And that's why I feel like this catharsis will kind of ease some of that pressure and lighten things up and give some clarity. You know that like pristine, quiet clarity you feel after a really good purge, cry, rage, catharsis moment? That's what I'm feeling here. Okay, I'm gonna, I have a little post-it deck that I made called Notes to Self. Let's see, what's the note to self for you, dear caller, at the full moon in Gemini? Hmm. Hmm, <laughs> nice. Oh my gosh, okay. Get on the same page next and go off script. Um, get on the same page for some reason is talking to me about, well, it's talking to me about like, get on the same page with yourself about um, what direction you wanna go in for sure. And it does kind of talk to me and then like next feels very decisive. It's like, okay, we're gonna get on the same page about I'm gonna just, I'm gonna choose this direction and then next I'm gonna move on towards it and go off script is like, and I'm not gonna be afraid to go a little rogue, you know? Like I'm not gonna be afraid to do something out of the ordinary for me. And it also feels like it's reiterating that permission to change your mind if you need to. And it was sort of to say like, there is no script. Like, don't forget, there is no script. Which is like terrifying and daunting, but also super freeing. I don't know why get on the same page feels like this <sighs> rage, struggle mentality part of this reading. So again, maybe that's just something for you to know. Maybe you're listening to this and you're like, I already know what that is. Or, you know, Mars retrograde in your 12th house, maybe it will, it's a little hidden from you right now, but it will become revealed. There is an active exploration quality that is present after the catharsis that really gets you out of the struggle and the frustration and the anger and gets your hands to work on something that you care about and in a direction that you feel good about. 
until you don't, and then you can change. That's what this feels like. Okay, I think I've said it. I think you understand. I hope you do. I hope this was helpful to you, my friend. Thanks for calling in. Okay, next. What is loving freely? Aqua, sun, Aries, moon, Sag, rising. Okay, <clears throat> in case you couldn't hear that, that was what is loving freely? Okay, to an Aquarius sun, an Aries moon, and a Sag rising. Interesting, the Sagittarian energy coming our way at the Gemini full moon. That polarity, that sun and Sag is talking to y'all. Okay. What is loving freely? For this person, of course. Loving freely means different things to different people. But for this caller, what does it mean to love freely? Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. Whoa, the cards are just coming, coming, coming. Okay. We have embrace, <clears throat> magic, play, <laughs> joy, and illuminate. And for those of you not watching the video cast, I'm going to um, walk you through the images on the card. So the embrace card is showing a new moon and um, just these hands like abstractly crossed in front, embracing like a bunch of floral, like flowers, they look like irises, holding them close to the chest. So embracing, a playful approach. In the play card, we see these people um, sliding down a slide, a windy slide. They look like they're having fun. A playful, joyful approach or a playful approach to the things that bring you joy. And here we have the sun with three eyes and its tongue sticking out, licking a rainbow <laughs> with flowers exploding everywhere. Interesting. Embrace play, embrace joy, embrace magic. And we have three people kneeling around an orb with like the moon in the background. And we have illuminate, which is very hermit in terms of tarot imagery, because we have a head inside of a lantern. Personal internal illumination, a private experience. And you're asking about loving freely. So it tells me that it first starts with a personal revelation, a personal illumination, you know, it's loving freely, loving others freely starts with embracing freedom and playfulness and joy within yourself. And maybe magic, whatever magic means. You know, I don't know what magic means to you. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But I think um, for some reason when I'm looking at this card, it looks very serious. Even the Illuminate card. Um, like I'm wondering if you're a person that sort of takes yourself seriously or, or um, has a very sort of uh, like sober, serious or like stoic approach to yourself and your relationships. Um, and the contrasting cards here are just completely lightening that up. 
and maybe advising you to lighten it up a little bit, you know, like lighten that up within yourself by embracing play and joy and like a playful playfulness, a playful approach to things like lighten up the magic a little bit or like find a playful approach to your inner work or your magical works and like you know like find a more playful approach within you and watch the magic happen <laughs> when you let yourself play and embrace joy and embrace the things that bring you joy and when that happens i think like loving freely becomes how you walk through the world because you are allowing yourself to love yourself freely when you approach the world through a lens of play and joy, you start putting that out there and like radiating that. Look at this joy card in the sun. It's radiating. And people see that. And people who want to love freely in that way, they will see that play and joy written all over your face. And that feels like magic. That feels like these people all attracted around the same orb, around the same energy. That kind of thing brings people together. But it all starts with you, Hermit, the, the Hermit's Lantern, the illumination, the light from within. Okay, let's get you a note to self. Little notes to self here. Oh wow, this card just sort of came out when I split the deck. You are a rock, you are an island. It's that song. I am a rock, I am an island. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you want to love freely. And this card is coming out and saying, but you are a rock and you are an island. Okay, you are somehow separating yourself or feeling separate and the rock indicates like a rigidity, a density, where these cards are like, lighten it up, play, joy, you know? Like a rock, if you throw it up in the air, it's gonna fall right back down immediately. And then you might just go, okay, well, I don't really know how to play with that, you know? But if you find a bunch of little like lighter stones and pebbles and you start sort of stacking them or I don't know, like playing with them in a different way, it's like, okay, if you're if the energy you're bringing out in here to the world is a rock and an island, like that's cool. Listen, I'm a very heavy earth sign. Like I get it. Um, so how can you work with it in a way that's more playful and brings more joy into your own experience? Because chances are that will bring joy into your connections as well. Maybe one more. Yeah, exactly. Yes, are you dragging dead weight? So there's the heavy again. You know, it really is talking about like dragging an unnecessary heaviness or like aloneness or like weightedness. Um, and what you are asking about is love and freedom which are light there's a there's a gap in like the energetic profiles here that we're talking about that starts with you changing your density changing your mass by like changing your outlook and your approach to your relationship with yourself you bring lightness and fun and play and joy and like even the embrace card is like indicates like acceptance and openness and like a willingness to take things into you and experience them and play with them and experiment. Um, that will change your density, your mass, your your weight. And the lightness will teach you inside yourself what it means to love freely, which will then um, make it very much more obvious it, how to bring that freedom and love into your connections with others. But it starts with you and, and it starts with um, practicing that in your own self. And like play, not even practicing it, that's even too like earth, too heavy, um, playing with it. You know, 
like, and, and that's a great example right there of how I just caught myself in the density and made a switch into a lighter way of framing it for myself instead of like, oh, okay, I have to go practice that. No, go play with it. What if you just go play with it? Be curious about it, experiment, explore, see what it feels like. Okay, nice. Uh, I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for calling in. All right, y'all, thanks for calling in. Um, you know, I'm looking very forward to Capricorn season. The winter solstice on December 21st is the day I am dropping your winter shift readings for all 12 signs on the zodiac. The first 15 minutes of those are free on the Unseen Hands Tarot YouTube channel. The full readings are available to members of the shifting space. So this is the space that is designed to hold you as you explore your shape shifts, shape shifts season after season. Um, so I cannot wait to drop them shift readings on y'all on December 21st, mark your calendars. And then a couple days later is the Capricorn new moon and we'll be doing an episode of the Get Red podcast. So that will be a really fun, exciting week. And if you wanna get red for that, um, make sure you call in. All right, y'all, good luck out there. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>